Hi, it's Jen and welcome to my channel and in this video I will be explaining how short-term and long-term meditation affect emotional regulation in the brain. Uh, this is part of my three-part series on how mindfulness meditation affects the brain. So if you want to see my first video in this series, I have posted the video in the description below and it is about how mindfulness affects attention in the brain. In today's video, I will focus on a research study entitled The Impact of Short and Long-Term Mindfulness Meditation Training on amygdala reactivity to emotional stimuli. So previous studies have shown that short-term and long-term meditation both correlate to enhanced mood regulation. However, this study will go into deeper detail as to the neural mechanisms that cause this enhanced mood regulation. So this study includes 30 long-term meditators and 30 participants who did short-term meditation and 30 participants who were controls who had no meditation experience. So to test emotional regulation, they had the participants in the fMRI look at pictures of faces. The faces were either positive, neutral, or negative. So the study was looking at the amygdala activity when each of these types of pictures were shown. Uh, the study also was looking at the functional connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, which I will explain in more detail in a second. In general, we know that the amygdala responds to both negative and positive stimuli, thus we were expecting to see reactions to both negative and positive pictures. The ventral medial prefrontal cortex is associated with the automatic control of emotions. Scientists aren't completely sure how the ventral medial prefrontal cortex um, works to automatically control emotions, but one theory is that it's coupled functionally with the amygdala. And what functional coupling means is that our brain is always lighting up, even when we're not doing anything. And areas that light up consistently together are considered to be functionally coupled. So this image compares the long-term meditators to the subjects that have never practiced meditation before. The y-axis is the amygdala activation and the long-term meditators are red while the novice meditators are in blue. As you see, red is below the blue on both graphs, indicating that there was less amygdala activation in long-term meditators than the novice meditators for both positive and negative pictures. The picture on the right shows that total hours practiced at open monitoring meditation retreats was correlated with decreased activity in the amygdala in response to negative images. Interestingly, this correlation is only found for hours spent meditating at retreats as opposed to just hours, total hours spent in meditation. Therefore, this implies that there's something about retreats that um, makes the amygdala react less than just regular everyday meditation. It might be that the meditation sessions are longer um, and more consistent throughout the stay at the retreat, um, but that is definitely something worth noting that this correlation only works when counting hours at of meditation at retreats. This study found that both short-term and long-term meditators had a decreased amygdala reactivity as compared to the control when it came to looking at positive pictures. However, this was not the same for the short-term group when they were looking at negative pictures. In fact, they had the same or a similar reaction to looking at negative pictures as the control would have. Therefore, this implies that further meditation may be required in order to suppress um, the effects of a negative picture on the amygdala. So now we will look at how the different types of pictures affect the connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. For long-term meditators, the study found that there was a functional connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex for when, they, when the long-term meditators were looking at pictures of negative faces. However, this was not the case when looking at pictures of positive faces. On the other hand, for the short-term meditators, there was a functional connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex for both positive and negative pictures. It's interesting that these long-term meditators are no longer using the ventral medial prefrontal cortex to suppress their amygdala reactivity, but rather their amygdala re reactivity is decreased, but for some other reason other than the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Researchers still aren't completely sure why or how this is happening, but some believe that this may just be due to a more overall acceptance of the current situation um, for these long-term meditators than for short-term meditators. So instead of needing 
to use the ventral medial, medial prefrontal cortex to suppress the amygdala reactivity, they just already accept it as the information comes in and they don't need to bring in these other things to stop the activity of the amygdala. It is really interesting to see that our automatic emotional regulation changes as we progress from being short-term meditators to long-term meditators. It gives me hope that it'll be just become easier and easier to work with my emotions as I do more and more meditation. And I hope that this gives you some good incentive to practice meditation more often as well. So the key findings from this study are that long-term meditators have decreased reactivity in the amygdala in response to positive and negative pictures as compared to non-meditators. Total hours practiced at open monitoring meditation retreats was correlated with decreased activity in the amygdala in response to negative images. Short-term meditation correlated with decreased activity in the amygdala in response to positive pictures but not negative pictures. This suggests that more meditation practice is required to reduce amygdala activity in response to negative pictures. Short-term meditators had greater connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex than the control group in response to both negative and positive pictures. Long-term meditators only showed increased connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex for negative images but not positive images. The fact that short-term meditators had increased connectivity between the amygdala and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex for positive pictures as compared to long-term meditators suggests that it is not necessary for long-term meditators to recruit the ventral medial prefrontal cortex in order to lessen the reactivity in the amygdala. This might be due to a more overall acceptance of stimuli due to long-term meditation practice. The next video I will be making on this series is how mindfulness meditation affects self-referential thinking and self-awareness, so look forward to that. And again, the other video in the series is posted below, and my channel is all about personal growth and um, meditation and neuroscience, so check out my video if you would like my channel if you'd like to see more and subscribe. Alright, and like this video if you liked it and share it with anyone you think it would help. Alright, bye!